What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some more animation for your app. Particularly, we're going to be taking a look at core animation. So you see this uh, app here we're going to be building. Let's see that one more time. So we start off with this red square that spins, moves, and fades away. And we're going to take a look at how to put this together in core animation, uh, how to work with layers in addition to uh, I'll be sharing a cool little wrapper framework that makes your animation code type safe. Uh, still a core animation under the hood, just simplifies and reduces the amount of code you need to write, making your life and my life much easier and much less error prone. So that all said, if you haven't done so already, which you haven't because the video just started, make sure you destroy that like button, helps out with the video uh, as always. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer. Let me stop blabbering on. Let's open up Xcode and let's start putting together some awesome animations. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template here and let's go ahead and call this my core animation. Make sure your language is Swift, interface is UIKit, uh, rather uh, storyboard and lifecycle is UIKit. Go ahead and continue and I'll save this on my desktop for now. And I've got a simulator booted up here. So let's pick it up in our selection here. And before we get into any code, Let's go ahead and hit that run button to make sure it's booted up and good to go for us. And while it's doing that, let me go ahead and expand my Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let me also bump up this font size so everyone can see it so it's nice and large. And let's get into some core animation. So cool, so first and foremost, we need something to animate. And we're gonna be applying core animations to uh, a core animation layer. So what we want to do first is create a layer. And the way we create layers is very similar to a UI view, uh, except it's a CA layer, core animation layer. And we're going to do it as follows. We're going to say a layer is a CA layer. And every view has a layer on it. So we're going to say view.layer add sub layer for the layer. We need to give the layer a background color so we can see it, of course. And actually, if you notice, if we go back to the autocomplete, you'll notice instead of a UI color, this one's a CG color. So a CG color, for those of you who don't know, is a core graphics color. And the way you get that is by specifying a basic color. So we'll say uh, system red. And then you just append on CG color. And then, of course, we want to give this a frame before we run it as well. So we're going to say the frame is a basic CG rect. And we're going to say, let's see, let's do 100, 100, 120 by 120. Go ahead and hit Command R and let's see what happens. So cool, we get a red square here as expected. Can't really distinguish it visually from a UI view, but it is in fact a layer. So now let's create different functions and take a look at how to animate things directly with core animation. So I'm going to say uh, func animate movement. And I'm gonna set a delay call to this function here. So we're gonna say dispatch queue, main async after. So we wanna call this function after five seconds. And we're simply gonna say self dot animate movement. The reason we're gonna do five seconds is so we can see the starting position. Let's actually go ahead and make this three seconds because I'm gonna get impatient really fast. And of course, as the name implies, we're gonna animate the movement in here. So how do you create a animation? So most animations that are quote unquote basic, like the position, the frame, opacity, there's a whole slew of them. Uh, those can be achieved through a CA basic animation. 
and you specify the key path that you want to animate. Now you'll notice that this parameter is a string, which is not ideal because you need to look at the reference to figure out what, uh, what string you need. And like I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the video, we'll take a look at a way to make this more type safe through a framework later on, but we're gonna animate the position and we need to specify a couple different uh, properties on this animation. So the first thing is the from value, which we're gonna say is our layer's current position. So let me actually make the layer a global here so we can access it. And this is going to be layer uh, dot frame. And we actually want the center. I believe this takes a CG point. So we're gonna say CG points with the X and a Y. And this is going to be the uh, width or the frames origin dot X. Might not be the center, might be the top left. Let's, uh, let's play with these numbers and see what we get. But we're gonna start there at the from value. We're gonna want to specify a two value and I'm just gonna pass in some random numbers here. Let's, let's do 300 and uh, 400. And let's see, what else do we wanna apply on here? We wanna apply a duration, which as the name implies is how long this animation will take in seconds. We'll say, we'll say two seconds. We also wanna apply something called a, whoops, not duration, animation animation, something called a fill mode. And this is an enum. And basically, uh, in a nutshell, this specifies how the animation will, once it completes, what's going to happen. So generally, you want forwards. In this case, the animation doesn't actually revert itself after completing. There's also uh, auto reverse on here, which we're not going to set for this animation. We are, however, going to set uh, is removed on completion to false. We don't want to remove the animation once it has completed. And there is also a begin time, of course, on here. So this is going to be, I believe, a float. It's actually a CF time interval. So we can actually get away with, I believe, assigning it a direct number like that. Uh, there's also CA current time. There's C a current media time, which is actually the start, which is actually more appropriate. So let's actually assign it that. And then finally, the thing we've all been waiting for, let's go ahead and add this animation to our layer. So we're gonna add it to, we're gonna add the animation to this layer. And this key is basically a key that you can provide to later on get all the animations that are applied to this layer. You can in fact pass in nil. And let's go ahead and run it and let's see if I broke anything already. So we've got this red square. Let's see if anything moves in two seconds. All right, so you see there it did in fact move. Uh, one thing which was weird is the starting position actually jumped up a little bit. I believe the uh, from value is the uh, in fact center of the frame. So we're gonna actually say this is the x plus layer dot frame uh, dot size dot width over two. And this one, is going to be layer.frame that size that height over two. This should give us a center point of the layer starting position and it should animate down here after a delay of two seconds, just like that. So let's, uh, let's make that delay a little shorter. I don't think we need it to be three seconds. Let's do one and let's go ahead and actually make this uh, a little faster. And you'll actually notice there's also a property on here called time function. Let's see, there's time offset, there's timing function is what it's called. And this basically specifies, uh, if we take a look at the type on this, how we want the animation to uh, correlate in time. So we want it to be either linear, we want it to ease in to start off slower and end uh, faster. And it's a CA media timing function. And let's see if we can figure this out. So timing function name. So you can actually create it with a name directly, which takes a, uh, which takes a, I believe a function name directly like that. So we're gonna say CA linear 
uh, KCA linear format. That's not what we want. CA media timing function. Let's click into this. So basically the ones that are important, instead of sitting here and figuring out what the enum is, there's linear ease in and ease out. And I'm actually going to leave this out for the time being. And we're going to look at this later on with the framework because it's far cleaner syntax. Core animation has a reputation of being verbose. But before we do that, let's look at some other cool animations. So let's go ahead and create this. And let's go ahead and say animate opacity. And as the name implies, we're going to animate the opacity. The from value is going to be one because the alpha is one to start off with. We're going to animate to zero. And we'll leave this. We can actually remove that. And let's see, fill mode, all that's good. Duration, let's make this three. And let's see, let's go ahead and call this function instead. So we're gonna say animate opacity. Go ahead and hit command R. And one thing I'll mention is you can chain multiple animations together to create uh, really cool looking effects. So there you saw it actually uh, faded out. And that's basically how you can run animations. Now, two important things. One, using this format, in my opinion, is pretty brittle. Uh, I'm surprised Apple hasn't made this an enum yet, but there's a pretty cool solution to this, and that leads me to the framework I keep on mentioning. And all the framework does is it creates type-safe wrappers around all of these functions. So it doesn't give you any fancy things on top of core animation. It truly is core animation under the hood, but it makes your life as a developer far easier. So we're gonna CD into the project. And I think I called it my core animation. And we're gonna initialize Cocoa Pods. And once that's good to go, give it a few seconds. We're gonna open the pod file and we're gonna add a pod. And that pod file, I believe, is called the animation, aptly named the animation. Let's lowercase that P so we don't get an error when we install. And let's go ahead and run pod install. And now that that's installed, we can go ahead and close this project. And we're gonna wanna go ahead and open up the workspace. So we're gonna say open mycoreanimation.xe workspace. And you'll see that we can actually change very, a very minor thing and we get type safety. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, type safety is basically the way that you can ensure that your code is less brittle, things are assigned properly, one big other issue with uh, this syntax here is the to value and the from value can actually be assigned to any. So you can imagine if I assigned this to be, I don't know, a string. Our animation, of course, wouldn't work, but you would get no error because from the compiler standpoint, your code is correct. So let's go ahead and import the animation. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and drop the CA and all of this stuff. And you'll see this turns into a uh, basic animation and the key path is complaining, it can't be a string. What it can be is an enum. And you can see all of these values change. Notice we don't have an issue here, but notice this from value is now a CD point. So the from and to values will be correlated to the specific type of animation key path you pass in. And that's all we need to do to get this to work. And the timing function, you'll look at, if you see in two seconds, it's so much cleaner now. So timing function, you can usually use an enum directly like this. And there's ease in, uh, ease in out, ease out, linear, so on and so forth. So let's say ease in out. And instead of applying the animation like this to the layer, the way you do it is you say animation and you do animate and you can pass in the layer that you want to animate just like that. And let's actually go ahead and do that for this other one here as well. And I'll show you guys a cool way where you can also take a look at what animations are available to you. Let me go ahead and copy and paste that right there. And if we run it, we shouldn't have any build errors and our result should be uh, identical. Whoops, let's pick the simulator we have already. Uh, our results should be identical to what we had before with now the added benefit of type safety. So here we are fading out as expected. And let's switch back to the other function. 
Let's go ahead and run that. Let's actually run both of them together and see what that looks like. Let me go ahead and call this one as well. Sometimes chaining animations together can be a little tricky if some of the, some of the parts not working as you uh, move and stuff, but there you can see we're fading out and uh, moving. And lastly, before we wrap up the video, if we command click into this enum, you'll see all the animations available to you uh, as a part of a basing animation. So uh, what they've done in this framework here is like you see, they've internally obfuscated all of the strings and made it type safe. So you can animate things like the background color, border, border width, uh, frame, mask, opacity, so on and so forth. Um, you can also animate, uh, you know, the, the actual frame origin, the position. The one that I think is pretty cool uh, is rotation. Rotation, I don't know why, I just have a, I have a thing for rotations. They look really cool. So if we go ahead and get rid of this and let's create another function to rotate. And I'm gonna copy that there for a second. And let's go ahead and create a new function and call it rotate. Go ahead and paste that enum value there. You'll notice the from and the to value are going to start complaining just like that because now these specify, I believe a floating point is what they want. Uh, so this is time off. So that's not what we want. We want the from and to value. Let's go ahead and change this to be zero. And we're going to change this to be pi over two. So we expect this to animate. And let me actually go ahead and change this to be linear. So it, uh, the, the, the time it takes to actually rotate is the same. So you'll see here that it starts to rotate. It rotates to pi and then it stops. Now, one other thing we can do is we can do pi like times I don't know, 12. And let me actually go ahead and increase the, the frame size of this as well. So it's a little larger. I could have animated it up, but let's, let's do it this way just for the sake of time. And we'll see that it'll rotate like crazy now. So if you want to create some pretty, pretty eye-catching animations of things in your app, rotation, uh, you know, along with these other animations are a great bet. Uh, so just to recap, Core animation, you can apply them to layers. You can also apply them to views in a uh, different fashion, but layers are generally the lower level and it's a little cleaner. Using the uh, type safe framework allows you to ensure that you haven't made any uh, you know, errors in your actual code. It's very, very similar syntax. Uh, you can uh, apply things directly like this. You can notice when we get rid of the type safety in that framework, uh, things all become a little more difficult, like the timing function. You saw even my sub struggle earlier to recall the syntax, whereas this framework really allows you to create animations and not waste your time. So that said, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the video and channels quite a bit. Helps me create more videos going forward for all of you. Comment any questions, concerns, feedback, video suggestions. Uh, I don't know if everybody saw, but I posted a link in the community part of this channel where uh, you can submit your video ideas and they actually come into a Google Sheet document that I have uh, that I look at because I know I don't get a chance to read every single comment timely. I definitely read them over time, but if you want your idea to you know, jump to the top of the list to get it on my radar, definitely find that link and submit it in the Google form. Uh, other than that, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, really helps out. Obviously, grow the channel if you enjoy the videos and have been viewing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.